Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Well, today we have got something com completely new, just been out in the last couple of weeks, and it is from our good friends at Tamiya, and it is their British two-ton 4x2 ambulance, also known as the KT Ambulance, yet another one, yeah? Come on, we seem to have had these coming through thick and fast in the last uh, sort of 18 months. So first of all, we had the Gecko one, then the Airfix one, both at 35th scale, of course. And now we've got one at 48th scale. Now, I was particularly interested in this one. Uh, I mean, I did, I did do the Gecko 35th review and I was mightily impressed with that. Um, not quite so much impressed with the Airfix. I didn't actually do a review of it, but I have seen it. I've had it in my hands. Uh, and, and, and I'm not knocking it because it was a much, basically it was horses for courses situation really. You, you, if you wanted the ultimate in detail, with the full engine detail and the gearbox and all that stuff and the chassis, you went for the Gecko. You wanted a simpler one with a bit, you know, there's a bit of a quicker build, you went for the Airfix. My kind of beef with the Airfix one, if I was to be completely honest, was kind of pricing because it was only, you know, a couple of pounds, uh, I think six pounds at the time when it came out, cheaper. And there was a much, there was a bigger gulf than six pounds, and I thought the Gecko was superior. Um, now, I know it's not for everybody, okay, I'm not going to sort of revisit that, but I think the Gecko pricing now is even more competitive, if anything. So, yeah, it's a tricky one because I think that, uh, I think there's almost parity in price between them, but anyway. I wasn't that interested in that particular scenario for me because I would prefer to have something at 48 scale, particularly for the obvious reason that it goes with the aircraft that I've got quite a few of. Now, some of you will have already seen my Austin, uh, the Austin van, which the RAF is in the RAF colours with the uh, tarpaulin over the top, which is uh, very popular. And of course, it was reissued by Tamiya. Uh, not too long ago with the Spitfire, wasn't it? The, their new uh, Battle of Britain Spitfire. So they've done like a twin set. Very good idea. Now this is perfect again to go with your Mustangs or your B-17s. It's got it with the Lancasters. Although I, I read when I did the research on the Katie that, that they actually were only used on RAF sites that were operated by the Americans. And they used a different, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it was a Bedford, a different uh, type of ambulance. Um, not sure if that's true, I didn't do a great extensive research, but it was very clear and said, oh no, it wasn't actually used by the RAF. It was used on RAF sites like uh, all these uh, airfields in East Anglia, but not on the RAF ones. Interesting. So it may actually be slightly incorrect, that photo, uh, the artwork here, which shows a Lancaster. I don't know, but it doesn't matter really that much, I don't think. They were on RAF sites and they were a common site during World War II uh, in the ambulance form. So I think you could quite happily use it in your dioramas. That would go, you know, great with one of my sort of field dioramas, like the Mosquito one that I've got and stuff like that. So this is a very uh, sensible choice. Now, it's, I think it's retailing this at about, I think it's around about the £22 mark, something like that, £23. Um, you may be able to get it cheaper than that. But it's brand new, it's only just come out, so let's take a look at it. So it's kit number... Dum -da -dum -da -dum, don't made it all that obvious, have they? Kit number 3-2... Three, three, 32, that's a strange pre, pre reference. 32605. I'm quite sure they've gone with 32, maybe it's 30 seconds ago. Anyway, nice artwork on the front. Uh, I think it's intended to be a fairly simple build, a bit like their others are. Um, so we're not going to get a gecko style interior, I don't think, on this one. But you can see it's um, yeah, it's just a nice 48 scale Katie, Katie ambulance. You know, you could do your ice cold and Alex style and uh, although this time they, they want you to just paint it in, our, in the olive green of the standard army colours. There's no mention of any desert option, if I'm being honest. Um, but, you know, I don't think that should necessarily stop you, to be quite honest. Anyway, let's have a look inside and see what we've got. I don't think this is going to be a... It's not going to be a, a massively long review this time. Unlike my recent F-35 review, which felt like it went on all day. Incredible. So much plastic and so much to read in the instructions. It was forever. Anyway, I should just uh, say as well, this is not actually my... I'm saying, oh, this should go very nicely with my mosquito. It won't be doing because it doesn't belong to me. Uh, it's actually the property of our great friend Chris, who has sent this to me, uh, quite at short notice in fairness, and said, look, I've got this. I think you should review it. I think you'll enjoy it, you know. Um, and because, you know, they are such a perfect complement for some of these, you know, figures you can get for, I recently did the 48 scale review 
the ICM REF figures and I think that's what gave him the idea when he saw that he must have thought wow that's the perfect complement you know given the scale I don't think it's not perfect about it it's his darn staples that Tammy I will insist on putting in uh, so I'll just remove those carefully I never slash them especially on other people's kits when you can just take the staple out so we'll come to that in a second we'll see what we've got in here first and let's get it cracking Okay, so we've got some general blur about safety, which we don't need. And then we've got a little technical write-up, so why don't we get start with that then? Uh, ooh, it's, it's quite fairly significant. It says, ambulances have long been the core of battlefield medicine. And from the First World War, with the advent of the motor car, meant motorised ambulances could become a common sight. This change intensified during further in World War II in conjunction with the motorisation and mechanisation of units generally as numerous varieties of ambulance were fielded in order to meet growing demand over ever-widening areas. One such vehicle was the two-ton 4x2, <laughs> no mention of the word Austin, but that's what it is, 4x2 ambulance fielded by the British Army, based on a civilian truck, by Austin, <laughs> it had a front-engine rear-wheel drive setup with 60 horsepower inline six engine that could provide, I think it was a petrol engine, wasn't it? that could provide 80 kilometres an hour, 50 miles an hour, isn't it? It's not bad, is it? On surface roads, and the rear compartment designed by the medical corps featuring innovations such as folding step at the rear. Inside were two long benches that seated a total of 10 patients. Gosh. Or it could, or it could be wound by handle into a two-level configuration similar to a bunk bed, allowing the transportation of up to four soldiers lying down. On stretches. A folding seat was provided for the ambulance crew along with crutch holders and other medical care essentials. Around 1300 were manufactured between 1940 and the end of the war. And they were not only in the British Isles but also saved lives on the fronts in France, North Africa, North and Northwestern Europe and were sturdy and easy to work on. Not to mention highly functional. This vehicle quickly became the mainstay of the British forces and was used by them into the 1960s. It was also employed by the US unit stationed in the British Isles during the war. Uh, what did I tell you? Uh, in the British Isles during the war and contributed as a major civilian, as a civilian vehicle to the reconstruction of Europe after, after the war ended. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. So, Ice Cold and Alex, fill your boots. Ameri put it with your American planes, fill your boots. And it would have been exactly appearing exactly the same on an American airbase as it does there. So... If you like your B-17s and your Mustangs and your Thunderbolts, no problem. Minutes ago, my Thunderbolt. Is Chris getting this back? It doesn't sound like it. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm kidding. It's fine. It's fine. You'll get it. You'll get it. Anyway, what have we got here? So we've got some clear parts. Come to that in a second. Uh, this is the one bag I think I'm going to actually have to cut open. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. It's only got a little weld in one spot. We'll soon be through that. Let's have a look at these decals. Now, people complain about Tommy's decals being a bit on the thick side, and sometimes they are, sometimes they are, but they look very, very nice. Look at this. Check this out. There we go. Nice, aren't they? Very, very... The colours look right, nice and sharply printed, and it's got the instruments there as well. A little bit of instrumentation. Yeah, they look all right. Those are very nice, and bright and sharp. Um, very nice. Uh, personally, I, in my experience from recent years, I've found that the decals from Tamiya are, yeah, they are thicker, but they're getting they're getting less thick. They're not as extreme as they used to be. They used to be really thick. You, know. you feel them, you know, if you run your finger across it. They, they were hard to get them to conform, but. Uh, I think it was on the Messerschmitt BF109 G6, they seemed significantly less thick uh, and, and I didn't have any issues at all, to be honest. So, there has been some improvements. Right, there we go. So, instructions. Here we go then. I've got to say the artwork's not the greatest I've ever seen, if I'm honest. It seems a bit mm -hmm. rudimentary, I think is the word I'd use. Anyway, opening it up, so what have we got? So, straight into the build then. It does, 
just show two options in terms of the decal uh, markings that are available. One's got the big uh, white. I'm guessing that, that maybe that this is a front line situation and this is the sort of thing you have on maybe on American Air Base, as I mentioned earlier. It's not quite as essential to be seen, but whereas if you're going to get shot at, they want people to see that it's an ambulance, don't they? If you're on an airbase, it's not quite as uh, not quite as dangerous. So we start building our chassis up with our leaf springs front and rear. You're going to put your exhaust on here. Then we're getting our um, differential and the prop shaft from the front. Uh, our steering mechanism here. And then we're going to build our uh, wheels and tyres up, and they look like they're all plastic, which is good news. It makes them probably look quite realistic. Um, I should just uh, interject here and say uh, those detractors, uh, I know that one or two people made some criticism of the Gecko, Gecko Ambulance, saying that something about the was it the tyres? But the tyres are wrong on the Airfix one because they modelled it on a, one they'd found in a museum that I'm afraid it was post war and it wasn't the right treads on the tyres and the wheels weren't quite right. Just saying. <coughs> We all make mistakes there, don't we? Even I. But uh, best not to get too, too too tight about such things. Anyway, then we're coming in here and yeah, we've got the uh, the fuel tanks either side. You're putting your wheels and tyres on. And then we're going to start building up the actual bulkhead. Uh, this is the front bulkhead, of course, with your spare wheel, which goes just behind the driver. Um, just look like the doors are not opening on the any of the doors on this, it's going to, there's going to be no interior. Bit of a shame that, bit of a shame. I thought they could have done a bit of an interior, but it is quite small, isn't it, let's be honest. Anyway, you've got um, what looks like a supplies box or ammo box that's going in there. Um, then you're going to put on, you've got some indicator lights just going on top of the wheel arches. And then you basically build up your box section for your, uh, your ambulance compartment at the back and it's just four walls really um, complete with there's a couple of windows and a couple of air vents uh, and then you've got the basic sort of floor that's going in for the cab then we've got our mud guards going in over here um, why is it showing them like that okay uh, they, they sort of click in and then and then flip that's quite interesting <laughs> Something a bit different. So then you've got your chassis and you've got your, your main cab and you're going to bring the two together. So that looks fairly straightforward. And you've got, you know, it looks like the driver sits on what's probably the battery box underneath. Uh, fairly rudimentary seat is going to go in here and then bring that in complete with the gear change. And then we've got building up, again, we're not going to get any detailed engine or any engine. <laughs> so we've got the bonnet being and the, the side uh, Cowling panels around the engine are going to go in here, and then you've got your uh, front radiator and headlights going on, and then you've got the windscreen, uh, front scuttle and windscreen going in there, bringing those two parts together here. And then we're going to build up our uh, instrument panel dashboard, I should say. Um, and then you've got the steering column going in here, and you've got your driver with his beret on. Driver figure, the driver figure I think would be pretty good. Then all that, that dashboard area comes in with the steering column and the steering wheel fitted. Uh, obviously you, you pop your driver in first before you put your steering wheel on, that'll make life a lot easier. And then you bring the actual top, uh, the windscreen and the bonnet etc down on top of that arrangement. And then you've got your, your roof cover, uh, it's got the forward rain cover and the main roof. And it's got, it looks like it's got an engraved sign saying front, which helps you when you're doing the construction. And then you've got your, uh, your little air fans, um, uh, the uh, uh, evacuators in the roof, which take, you know, the spin around and uh, provide some, they've probably got filters in, so in case of sand storms and things like that, it stops any sand getting in. Uh, it's just a ventilation, isn't it? A little ventilation hole. And then finally, you bring all that together down onto the main cabin, and, and that's it, you're done. So it looks pretty simple. Um, yeah, so it's not, you know, don't think, don't, don't be thinking back and comparing with those 35th scale kits because it's not intended to be like that. This is clearly something that anybody can build, really. It's not, not for advanced models, it's, it's for anybody, I think, really. 
Then you've got your paint schemes coming in here. Well, it's olive green, basically. <laughs> uh, unless you're going to do, you know, a desert, a desert sand version. Um, and that really is that. So there's not a lot to, uh, not a huge amount of the instructions. Quite a, a very different animal from the uh, F35B that I recently reviewed, which was a marathon, to be honest. But let's have a look what we got. Oh, we've got some more delightful staples. I do like them. The one thing about Tamiya, I've done my Tamiya talk, let's talk about Tamiya, and it's the one thing I didn't sort of groan about, and I should have actually. I don't like staples, don't like them at all. especially on clear parts, I don't think they go together at all. You end up, you know, if you don't remove them like I did then, you can end up with a lot of problems. Well, I've got no problems with the clear parts themselves, they look really nice, look at this. So here we go. Yep, they look super, super, very, very clear, very bright. They don't look, don't look too thick. Um, on the thick side, actually, but not too thick, I don't think. Given you know what the Thor windscreen, uh, I think they were, I think they, I think it was armoured glass that they did use generally. I don't think it was just standard glass, because obviously they're often in a battlefield situation. So and you've also got your two headlamp uh, glasses there as well. But it's, uh, in terms of distortion, it seems really good actually. You can't see a lot of distortion there. Very nice. So not a problem with those. Yeah, quite like that class actually. Um, and you can see how Tamiya are aiming, you know, if you look at the way that they are focusing this product, as I said, it's not focusing at advanced models like something like the F35 or, or one of those amazing kits that they produce, or the 30 second scale kits. This is trying to be appealing to youngsters, I think, and people who are perhaps, maybe people returning to the hobby or just beginners, you know. So let's have a look. We've only got two sprues to look at, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, we've got it in this sort of a khaki coloured sprue, plastic. Yeah, it's a typical feeling Tamiya. Uh, just a slightly unusual colour to my eye. So we've got our, it's a battery box and steering wheel that I mentioned earlier. A bit closer actually. There we go. And then we've got the uh, the gear gear shifter and the leaf springs. And then over here we've got our mud guards. And then we've got our wheels and tyres, and I've got to say they look really nice actually. And obviously that they're in two sections, they've got that insert, which they've done before, haven't they? I think they did it on the Willys Cheap and also on the uh, Austin van. And they do look very good, and they do seem to avoid any horrible seams. So I think I think they've got I think they've got those treads correct as well, actually. But that looks very very nice. Look at the the bolt heads in the wheels. Yeah, they've done them done them well. Then you've got over here you've got your exhaust, full exhaust system, and here's your differential and prop shaft, and you've got your leaf springs steering mechanism and then you've got your fuel tanks the thing you, you notice straight away on this there's no flash at all which is one thing it does have in common with the F35 that had no flash anywhere <laughs> look at the chassis it's only, it's only one piece look with the lower lower parts of the fuel tanks isn't that nice that's quite well done actually and you have got the lower part of the engine visible <laughs> even if you don't get the rest of it you've got the sump and the gearbox here yeah it's not too bad then we've got our soldier. Try and get in nice and close for this. Now that's quite decent, isn't it? Then we've got him here with his beret cap on. Let's so get a little bit closer. Yeah, it's actually just locked on the uh, something you can't see obviously when you're looking at the video, but I get like a crosshairs lock on if it's a face. And it, it gets close enough and it, it just about at that that range it locks on and realizes it's a human face. And it focuses on that face, which is really nice. Um, yeah, they've done that well, I think. For, for the scale, you know, uh, and the cost of this kit, it's it's pocket money, really. Sort of 20, 20 pound-ish. That's very, very nice. Very nice indeed. Let's have a look at this one. Over here we've got the, the other sprue. This is basically all the rest of the unit. So we've got here the uh, the floor, so to speak, for the cab 
the main cab here, you've got the main uh, passenger area, sort of patient area at the back, you've got your mud guards, etc. Then you've got your bonnet, and you've got over here the dashboard. Rather a nice looking uh, radiator, that's nice isn't it, they've performed it very well. And then, just a bit of a shame they couldn't have had a bit more detail, maybe have had the doors open in the back. I would have liked to have just seen, even if it was just a seat and a couple of stretches either side, just, just the basic interior. But they've gone for simplicity of build, haven't they? Very much so. I mean, this is even even simpler than Airfix. So those that liked Airfix and argued that they wanted a quick build, well, this is the one for you. I mean, this is a weekend build, isn't it, this one? I reckon. And you've got your roof there with your uh, ventilation extractors at the top. Over here, again, you've got the sort of sliding, they have a sliding uh, shutter, don't they? With an extractor uh, ventilation uh, grill there and exactly the same on the opposite side as well um, and then this is obviously the rear uh, there's room for a, sorry that's the, sorry that's the front I should say the front and the door at the front that's where the spare wheel goes and again all ventilators etc so there we go that's really it um, yeah, it's, it's very simple, isn't it? It's a really simple kit, very straightforward indeed, to be quite honest. Um, well, I, I might like to have seen a little bit more detail, I've got to be fair. Um, but it, you've got to think about what it's aimed at. It's aimed at being in dioramas and things. It's not It's not aimed at being a diorama within itself. You know, like you know, the 135th scale kits you got from Airfix and Gecko. They were aimed at going in with figures around and all that kind of thing. This is really just sort of going to be something that you add into an airfield scene or you know maybe a battle scene or something like that the scale it's at it's not supposed to be the kind of star of the show i think that's the way that they've intended it so i think i'm going to give it nine out of ten i mean the way it's you know it's, it's a simple concept perhaps perhaps too simple but the way they've actually executed it is perfect as usual um what they're trying to achieve they've just done it to the letter you know and uh, you could put that in with your aircraft, you know, any airfield, as I mentioned, with the 140X scale planes, American or British, and it won't look out of place. You could put it in the back of a battle scene in Normandy or something, and it'd be absolutely fine. So there we go. So I'm giving that 9 out of 10. hope you enjoyed that. I thought it was interesting. Um, I hope you'll give me 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up. And, um, yeah, it's, it's even got the, uh, the foldable sort of door cover that you've just folded across. And it's got the open door and they just have a canvas door cover. I just realised it's there. I missed that actually. Nice, I like it. I like it. I like these little 48 scaled uh, vehicles that Tammy are doing. I'd like to get some more of them ready. Anyway, thank you very much to Chris for loaning us the, the kit. I uh, really appreciate your help. Thanks, thanks for that. We'll try and get that back to you uh, before Santa gets puts his feet up for his holidays, uh, i.e. the postman. <laughs> Um, get that sorted for you and uh, yeah and please look out for many more interesting reviews that are coming through over the Christmas period we've got something from Meng we've got one or two manufacturers I haven't seen before um, and yeah one or two of the uh, the final manufacturers reviews which I mentioned including Tamiya which I think you'll probably enjoy I think you find it quite interesting in the meantime thank you very much for watching please stay safe stay well and stay warm. <laughs> and until next time, thanks a lot, and bye for now.